as part of our discussion on elasticity we now talk about uh, elastic potential energy of a wire so let's say we have this wire of length l and it is rigidly held at one end what we are interested in knowing is what would be the elastic potential energy stored in this wire if it was to elongate through a length small l so let's say i show that elongation Let's say this is the one part showed in red is the elongation L. So this distance, this is the elongation small L. Of course, this is exaggerated. A wire of length, this much length would not elongate by this much. But uh, just to explain a point, I'm taken an exaggerated elongation. So what I'm interested in knowing is what is the elastic potential energy stored in this wire when it is elongated through length L because when a wire is stretched the work is done against the interatomic forces in this and which is stored as elastic potential energy over here the way when I when I have a spring and I elongate it the elastic potential energy is stored in this spring similarly in this uh, elastic potential energy will be stored in this wire so what I will do is I will find out the work done for this elongation Right. Now, the interesting thing that we need to note is that during this elongation, as this wire expands, the work done keeps on changing because the force required for elongation keeps on changing as this wire expands more and more. As this elongation keeps on increasing, the force required for the same amount of elongation would keep on changing. For example, for one millimeter elongation over here, you would require some force, but one millimeter elongation in this part would require a different force, and therefore. Uh, what we'll do is we'll have to do integration because the force is not constant and work done by variable force we use integration. So what we'll do is let's say that the original length is L and initially because of application of force it expands up by length X. Let's say that length X is this much. Let's say this is X. So what I'll do is I'll first use the equation for Young's modulus. Let's say y is the young modulus of the material of this wire is given by force by cross section area into elongation x by the original length L. And therefore, I get equation y is equal to F L by A x. And therefore, the force applied is given by y a l by x so this is the equation for force that we get which needs to be applied over here so when this has elongated by a length l x this is the force applied now let's say that this wire further elongates by extremely infinite similarly small distance dx or small length dx so this is dx so the work done for this elongation, small elongation dx, dw, is given by f dx. And this will be equal to y a l x into dx. What I have done is for this value of f, I have substituted this value of f, y a l x dx. So this is the small work done to elongate this by wire by the small displacement dx. From this, I can say that in increasing the original length L, from L to L plus L, from L, I want to increase the length to L plus L. That means the value of x over from uh, x over here is zero. X equal to zero over here, and here x equal to L. So I will use these limits for integration because I want to find out the total work done between these limits, x equal to zero and x equal to L. So Total work done would be given by integration of dw and that would be given of integration of y a by l x dx and the limit of x is from 0 to l. So I will take 0 to l. Therefore, the work done will be given by y a by l is constant and I will get integration of x. Will be the limit 0L dx 
that will be equal to y a by l integration of x dx is given by x square by 2 between the limits 0 l and this will be equal to y a by l I'll put the well this value of x over here so I'll get l square by 2 minus 0 square by 2 so I'll not write that actually I will have over here l square by 2 minus 0 square by 2 putting the value of this value for x and this would be equal to y a by l l square by 2 and now I can do a little bit of uh, a rearrangement of this so this work done is y a l l square by 2 so I can take half over here and I got l square over here and therefore what I can do is I can rewrite this as is equal to half y y l by l I have taken one l over here with this y l by l into another l by l I have introduced this l and I have multiplied by a l into a l what I have done is I have multiplied one capital L in the numerator and one in the denominator this L and this I have added over here multiplied in y L by L into a capital L by L I have added this and that is L upon L so these two L are over there and if I look at this equation what do I get y L by L y L oh let me write it over here right? we know that y is equal to stress up on L by L. So y into L by L which is strain is equal to stress. So this term y L by L is stress. L by L is strain and cross sectional area of the wire into its length will give me volume of the wire. Therefore the total elastic potential energy which I can write as U total this is total elastic potential energy is half stress into strain into volume of the wire and if I want u per volume of the wire it will be half stress into strain and just to confirm let's see what is the unit that we get stress is newton by meter square unit and strain has strain has no unit so this is unit so it will be newton per meter square this is this energy per volume so energy per volume would be what newton meter is energy per volume is meter cube so newton per meter cube so the units of both the sides also match and therefore we get this that the elastic potential energy stored in a wire which is elongated through some length is given by half stress into strain and this potential energy per unit volume. If you want to find out the total energy, we use this equation half stress into strain into volume. Thank you.